What's going on, guys? Hi. We are really wanting to um, chat with you guys today about authenticity within relationship, about stewarding authenticity within relationship, which also includes learning to be authentic ourselves. I think we are oftentimes really afraid to be our most authentic, the most authentic version of ourselves, because if we are, <gasps> they might not like me. They might not like you. And people do that when they start dating. Mm -hmm. They do that with their friends. They do that with their family. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm the black sheep of my family. I don't know about you. <laughs> I've been throughout my life, off and on. I'm the fucking black sheep. <laughs> They're all Christians, beautiful people. I love them all. But I'm the black sheep because I've taken a different path. My journey has taken me in a completely different place. And, and do I shy away from being myself around the family that I am a black sheep when I get invited to family functions? Hell to the <laughs> night. No, because if I can't be authentic, then I also will never spark that authenticity within another person. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I love more than anything is, is sparking other beautiful human beings to be their most authentic fucking self. And uh, I love people. And one of the things that for us in our relationship, we both came out of, I'll let you share a little bit of your own, but I know I came out of a relationship a long marriage in which um, I didn't feel like I could always be myself without affecting the mental health of my my ex-wife. I love her. Um, she is a beautiful person, but I always felt like I and 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 again, this is my story, just my story. We all have stories, these narratives. I used to say all the time to my students, I used to tell everybody, there's no truth in the story. It's just a story. It's your own perception. Somebody else could have been at the same event and have a very different story about that event. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It's just a story. It's not fact. It's not truth, capital T, truth, unchanging, unwavering. It's just a story. So don't get too caught up. But I always felt like if I were to be my most authentic self, um, or share my desire, share the things that I wanted to do, that it caused massive, uh, massive, massive mental health issues, suicidal tendencies, and many, many other things, which I won't go into because I'm not here to talk about her. And I, as a result, though, I kind of held back, held back, held back, still was continually transforming and evolving. But as I did, we just grew apart and mm -hmm. farther and farther apart. And, um, and I know that for me, when I met you and, and I, when I met you, I didn't intend for this to, to be a thing, right? I don't think either of us did. Neither one of us did. <laughs> um, and you captivated me and you kept drawing me and you kept just fucking sucking me in. It was, um, I didn't know what it was. Uh, I know now what it was, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know why I felt so drawn to you but i think the reason is because we're both fucking weird mm -hmm. we're both really strange we're odd we're weird um authentic we're very authentic people if you're not authentic you're not going to want to hang out with us i promise <laughs> matter of fact you're probably not even listening to this mm -hmm. watching this right now and guarantee you none of that's happening mm -hmm. but we we were just kept being drawn together drawn together drawn together and um it just it wasn't just that that I liked your pussy. It was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was so and so much more. And uh, one, the thing that I told you continually when we first met in that stack of love letters, there's a love letter in there. Um, we were looking at them the other day and I started reading it. And it was all about me. I was basically telling you that I want to love you freely. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be the most authentic version of you all the time. I don't want to ever hinder, be a hindrance to, to you, to you being you. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was so vital because not only do I not want to be a hindrance to your life, but I don't want anyone, no one, nothing to hinder my freedom of expression. I want to be able to be me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted a partner who was in love with that, who was in love with the strange person that I am and wanted to be with somebody that was ever evolving and changing and growing and wanted to grow with me, not just 
be like, that's weird. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we came together to very, our paths crossed so many fucking times. And then eventually the universe just brought us together and it was a really beautiful thing. And I, one of the most precious things to me about our relationship is our ability to steward the authenticity in each other, to be able to encourage honest expressions. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about, you know, what you came out of or what, how important that is to you, but. Um, so came out of a long marriage myself. Um, Loved my loved my ex husband. I still love him. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's an awesome person, awesome human being. Um, but similar to you, I found myself, you know, in a relationship where my partner was, or I felt like my partner was stifling those parts of me that were were me. Um, you know, so in order to keep the marriage and be with the person that I loved, I found that I stifled those authentic parts of myself and who I was, um, you know, eventually eroded the relationship because I couldn't be authentic with, about who I was. Um, so I couldn't be authentic with him. Um, what did, when you did, what did that, if you, did you ever try? It did. Um, what did you feel like when you tried? Was it, it was a hard conversation? Did I, did I was met with, uh, Def, def, de, you know, in a defense type, def, he would go into a defensive mechanism um, and just immediately try to turn things around that, you know, or, well, you're doing this, or you're doing this. And um, there was no, it, it always turned into an argument of who was in the wrong, who was in the right. And which, you know, half the time when I was expressing those, those feelings, it was always, you know, it was not you're right or I'm right. You're wrong or I'm wrong. You know, it was just admitting that there was faults all the way around um, but it was an immediate shutdown on his part where he didn't want to hear what I had to say. Um, you know, so trying to keep peace, he just, he stopped communicating. He stopped talking to one another because, you know, if you can't express a feeling and not be met with at least an open mind, right. um, you stifle yourself. And Yeah. So I've been doing, um, coaching, teaching, counseling marriage counseling for a long time mm -hmm. uh, over 20 years um I don't even want to get into how long but and one of the things that i found within 90 i would say 90 some odd percent of the marriage counseling that i did specifically within partnerships and marriages relationships was that neither one of the individuals involved in that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I never had the, the privilege of counseling within a polyamorous relationship or anything along those lines. It was all monogamous relationships. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I realized was that they, they, none of them could fucking be honest with each other. Mm -hmm. you can't talk to one another. Why can't you talk to the person you're the fucking closest to? Mm -hmm. If you can't be honest with your husband, your wife, your partner, Boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. I don't care. I don't care if you're a week into a relationship or 20 years into a relationship. Why you? If you can't be honest, do you really want to be with them? And guess what, people that are just starting to date you, young kids out there dating, hanging out, doing your fucking thing, be fucking you. I don't know what that looks like. And guess what? You really don't know what that looks like. What it looks like is being honest in that moment to your feelings mm -hmm. and to your thoughts and to your expressions and, and expressing yourself because for the beauty of expressing yourself instead of looking for the, uh, the approval of the other person. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I love you because it feels so good to love you. I love you because it feels good to you. Let, not, it's not a chore to love you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're ever doing something for somebody because you feel like you need to do it in order to get their approval, mm -hmm. have you ever done that? Mm -hmm. How much fun is that? And then when you, and you almost never get their approval the way they want their cake, okay, you're making dinner, but you really want to make it and you want them to be like, Oh, thank you so much, baby. For making mm -hmm. Doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it's a, it's a, it's an issue that we have that is like, it's like a cancer in our society mm -hmm. and it's almost just the norm. Now people just aren't honest mm -hmm. from sexual um, attraction to what they, what they desire in their, in the, in their bedroom to uh, the, the uh, splitting up of chores or bills or money or you name it. They can't be honest. Mm -hmm. 
they're afraid to be honest with their partner, with their, their spouse, with their partner or partners. And so I find that I think that this is really um, huge for relationships to learn how to be honest again, mm-hmm. how to be real. And I, and I think the first step and one of the most, it's not, it's not even a practical step, but one of the, I think really the first step is to learn how to be honest with ourself, mm-hmm. like how to be authentic. What does it look like to be authentic? People just spend so many years carrying the burden of everybody else's feelings and emotions to the point that they've inherently or inherited the the concept that your own feelings and your own desires are not important that everybody right. else is how they're feeling if they're comfortable if this situation makes them feel happy or does this situation make them feel sad does right. my feelings of the situation even matter anymore yeah, um, we're just doing it's we're just doing to, to 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 appease other people yeah um and i'm not and i'm not saying ignore other people's feelings or be no. ugly or or you know scream at somebody when you're having feelings you know talking about it with somebody in a, in a way that communicates how you're feeling without trying to cause damage to somebody else but you know there's a lot of burden that everybody carries of everybody else's emotions and needs and yeah i think loving freely Mm -hmm. i one of the things in that love letter that i said was that i wanted to hold you loosely and openly i wanted to be open i want to hold you with an open hand and love you loosely and i love this analogy um can't remember where I heard it, but they said if you if you if you love a flower, you don't pick it; mm-hmm. uh, it'll die. If you love a bird, you don't squeeze it; mm-hmm. you hold it loosely. Mm-hmm. And you want to give you want that bird to be able to soar, to be able to fly, and you love it enough to let it go, to hold it loosely, to know that it may never return to you, but it's doing the thing that it loves the most. And the thing that you loved about it. Yeah, you, you don't love a bird because it's landlocked, because it lays around. No, you think it's beautiful it's that they can fly and soar. Yeah. You think a flower is beautiful because it grows and it blooms, and, blooms it. and it looks gorgeous. And, you know, um, when That's, you take those things away from yeah. what they are, then it loses that beauty. Which, in essence, this is what people are doing in relationships all the time, mm-hmm. is they get together in a relationship and they fall in love and they're like, oh my God, she is wild. And she is love free. Love this about them. And I so love amazing. It. Oh my God, the way she just is. And then you get married or you become partners and you start holding tight. And that bad attachment, not all attachments are bad or wrong, but that negative attachment I'm holding on, I'm grasping. Well, I don't want you to go out. I don't want you to do that. Uh, I don't want you to be attracted to anybody else. I don't want you. To. My God. And then we start trying to control the person unintentionally most of the time, mind you. Because we're afraid of losing it. Yes, we're afraid we, to lose the yes. thing that we love. We don't. We don't want those things that made us fall in love with our partner be the reason why somebody else might fall in love with your mm. partner. Or you know, I enjoy that he makes me laugh all the time. Well, I don't want. I don't want these other people to be laughing at. He's mine. Those are my laughs. Those are you know. Those yeah. belong to me. Um, so then we start making our partner pull away from those parts of themselves because right. you know we love that. They were the life of the party when they walk into the room. Well, now we walk into the room, they're still the life of the party and it's taking them away from you in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, you know, I, well, I don't want to share you with the world. Right. Yeah. And it's, it really is what you, what we end up doing and then in trying to control the other person and doing what you just talked about is we end up actually robbing our partner of their authenticity and of the thing that we fell in love with them for. Mm-hmm. And so then that partnership grows apart and it grows uh, really uh, stagnant. Mm-hmm. Instead of growing together in love and passion. And sometimes it's that thing that is the most wild thing, that thing that you're afraid of the most, that is actually that, that, that one element that's supposed to spark passion in your relationship. Mm-hmm. And... If you take that out of the relationship, you take that away and all of a sudden the passion's gone. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, within all marriages, a lot of young marriages out here, you, you get in shape, you're looking for that partner, that lover. Mm-hmm. And within a year, typically the woman's gained 30 to 50 pounds and the dude's also gained a bunch of weight. 
And it's because now I got them. <laughs> mm-hmm. The mind, I got them. And um, instead of still wanting to be your best mm-hmm. for yourself and for your partner, you've just stopped. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen marriages do that. Then they get a divorce and then they go right back to be trying to get back into shape. Mm-hmm. And then they get remarried and they do the same damn thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an epidemic. I mean, it really is a problem. So like when, when we're talking about stewarding uh, authenticity within relationship, I feel like we need to get practical with you. And so in thinking about how we steward authenticity within our own relationship, what do you think like the, the pr- probably one of the most important elements or a first step, first practical step, what do you think that could be? you have any thoughts on that? Being honest with yourself, honest. first and foremost. I think you have to be with able yourself. To, I like with that. yourself. Um, yeah. How you are feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's okay. Yes, very okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay to feel whatever you're feeling. Mm-hmm. It's not wrong. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. It's okay to have the thoughts that you're having. They're not bad. It's when we fight against those feelings Mm -hmm. that we hurt ourselves, that we damage ourselves, that we're not giving room for healing in our own heart and our own minds. So it's okay to have those feelings. And in partnerships, it's really important for you guys to come together. First step might just be to look at your partner, sit down around the table, or when you're laying in bed at night, cut the fucking TV off and look at your partner and say, I want you to share what's on your heart. And whatever it is on your heart, whatever you desire, whatever feelings are going on in you, it's okay. I want to hear them. This is a safe place for you to communicate with me. And and then be that safe place. Mm-hmm. They're not attacking you or sharing fe- Their feelings are just feelings. And they're okay. And we need to learn to not only be okay with them within ourself, mm-hmm. but then for our partner. But before we can ever be okay with our partner's feelings what you're saying we have to be okay with our own yeah sorry i cut you off that's okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just got you, you know you, you gotta create space for yourself um but also being willing to create that space for your partner too yeah. um because if you want them to accept you where you're at you have to be willing to accept them where they're at as well yeah. um but you know having that communication and talking about those feelings and knowing they're not coming from a place of why do you make me feel this way? We make ourselves feel the way we feel. Nobody else is responsible for those feelings, but ourselves, our, our inner thoughts. Um, but you know, that's why I said it's, it's important to be able to be honest with yourself first and foremost, um, and start creating that space within yourself for you. Um, so then you can create space for your partner. Um, and even in tough moments, like when you're feeling something oh, some way about your partner, I think it's important to come to them. And when you, as you develop a, that safe place, mm-hmm. eventually you're able to look at them and say, I, I just want to talk to you about how I'm feeling. I'm feeling this way, but these are feelings. This is, I'm not saying this is the truth. I'm not saying this is reality. These are feelings that I'm having. Mm-hmm. And to, to be able to treat those conversations, I mean, really, honestly, honestly, any conversation, but especially those conversations, in a in a real, um, in a real as a say, kind of a sacred space, mm-hmm. where you can really be honest about your feelings, and it's not an attack on your partner. Mm-hmm. It's not an attack, and it's not admitting that you're. Anything, it's just an expression of feelings. Mm -hmm. I think the, I think the key in that is for both people to be in love. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think like early on in our relationship, we had a handful of, we had a handful of little, like we always had 99% of our relationship was beautiful. And then we would have like 1% of the time that was like, it was, it was rough. Sometimes we were drinking partying and then we had a never have emotional conversations when you're drinking just yeah. a PSA um. <laughs> which I'm always a resolve immediately human being but yeah. I've learned and you have to learn who your partner is and how they are and I've learned 
with you that, that you're not that way. That you want to think on it and really allow your words to be treated with honor and respect and not just say stuff. Yes. I don't like to speak from a place of emotionality mm -hmm. when I'm caught up and swept up in all those different emotions. Um, you know, because a lot of times, you, you know, emotions are never just one thing. Yeah. Um, there are multiple layers to it. But, uh, you know. I'm not somebody who wants to speak from that emotional state because I know yeah. I can say mean and hateful things. And ultimately, it's not really truly how I feel. But in right. those emotional states, I dysregulate a bit. And uh, we've, we've learned from each other. And through practice, yeah. we've not always been great communicators. No one ever is. And it doesn't even matter if you're a coach or... Uh, as somebody that is counseling, you might have all the information, but that doesn't mean you're practically living it out within your relationships and mm -hmm. learning to do that is really important. Mm -hmm. And there's one specific thing that I always tell you in those moments, if, the, if we've had those heated moments now, I typically, I calm you down and I'll get you to look at me mm -hmm. and I'll say, baby, we're feeling these ways because we love each other. Mm -hmm. I love you. And I just need you to look at me and acknowledge, I love you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can go to sleep, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to go to sleep angry. I want you to go to sleep. I want to hold you. I want her to hold me. We can go to sleep and we can talk about it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I love you. Mm -hmm. And you always say, I love you too. And then we fall asleep. And mm -hmm. we fall asleep in a good way. Because I am not one that can go to sleep mm -hmm. if she's mad at me or no. angry. No. Or if, no. even if there's a misunderstanding. That's all mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. So it starts, I think, I think what we're really saying what 20 minutes to, get, to say, roundabout way 20 minutes to say <laughs> is that in our relationships we need to create a safe place for honesty mm -hmm. before i can ever the first step to stewarding authenticity in a relationship is to create a safe sacred place within the relationship for complete honesty and vulnerability dudes out there you fucking suck at being vulnerable and a lot of you women do too but we dudes especially are really bad at being vulnerable. I think in our relationships, the opposite. You are the one that struggle with that more so than me. Bit, yes. But because of our, what brought us to the place that we're at, that's mm -hmm. why. And I think it's so vital that we, we have that sacred space mm -hmm. where we can be honest with each other. And it's one of, one of the reasons why oftentimes, so many times we're going to sleep and I ask, what's, what's on your heart? Are you asking me what's on your heart? Do you have any desires? Do you have anything that you've been desiring or wanting or feel like you're in need of? And we're not asking for the frou-frou. I'm not asking her, you know, do you desire, what do you desire, chocolate ice cream? Mm -hmm. Is that what you've been desiring? I'm saying, what you want? You want, you want some DVP, baby? You want, what do you want? What that, you do want it? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is those most intimate, deepest, darkest even desires that you might have i want you to be able to be real so that we can talk about it mm -hmm. and and in this safe place because i love you and i know you love me our love we're gonna listen we mm -hmm. want because we want to steward that honesty and that authenticity within our relationship mm -hmm. so create a safe place for you and your partner if you're watching this by yourself go grab your partner bring his or her ass into the room sit down Watch this together mm -hmm. so that you guys can be on the same page. And if you both don't want to create that safe place, here's what I would tell you. Find somebody that wants to create it with mm -hmm. you because you will be living in a stagnant relationship, a passionate, less relationship mm -hmm. if you're not willing to create that space for honesty, vulnerability, and authenticity. So we'll come back to you with part two. Uh, Later, probably next month or so, uh, depending upon 